In this video, we are going to talk about the patellofemoral joint. We will also discuss the movement of the patella and also patella alta and patella baja that is the patellofemoral pathology. So to begin with, patella is a triangular bone which has an apex inferiorly and base superiorly. If you look at it posteriorly, it has an odd facet on the medial side and also it has a vertical ridge which divides the medial and lateral articulating surfaces which are more convex. So these are the medial and lateral articulating surfaces. This is the odd facet on the medial side and also this is the apex and this is the base of the patella. The movements present at patella are patellar flexion, patellar extension, medial tilt and lateral tilt, medial rotation, lateral rotation, medial glide and lateral glide. So let us start with patellar flexion. As patella crosses 90 degree at the knee joint, the contact begins to migrate inferiorly and the smaller odd facet makes contact with the femoral condyle. That is, this is the smaller odd facet, it makes the contact with the femoral condyle. During the full flexion, that is 135 degree of flexion, the patella lodges itself in the intercondylar groove and makes contact with the odd facet and also laterally it makes contact with the femoral condyle. As you can see at 135, it makes majority of its contact on the lateral side and very small aspect on the medial side. During flexion, the pole of the patella moves posteriorly. Then second movement is the patellar extension. During patellar extension, the patella is placed superior in the femoral condyles and it is a relatively unstable position. During 20 degree of flexion, the patella makes contact with the femoral condyles only about this much part that is the inferior pole of the patella makes contact with the femur. Whereas as it starts going into more flexion, the area starts widening and at 45 degree patella makes around this much area contact with the femur. And at 90 degree this much area is covered by the patella that is contact with the femoral condyles. The next is the medial and the lateral tilt. This tilt occurs when there is relative lateral rotation of the femur that causes lateral tilt of the patella. So if this is the patella in the patellar groove, when femur rotates laterally, that is lateral rotation of the femur, what happens is the patella along with femur moves and it tilts laterally. So the tilt of the patella is, this is the medial tilt and this is the lateral tilt where the anterior surface moves on the lateral side is the lateral tilt and when the anterior surface moves on the medial side it is the medial tilt. So when the tibia rotates medially that is the relative rotation of the femur on the lateral side the patella goes for lateral tilt that is this way. So if you look at the patellar tilt it occurs in the longitudinal axis or the vertical axis so if this is the axis the patella moves around its axis like this. The next is the medial and lateral rotation of the patella that is the patella moves around its anterior posterior axis. So if this is the patella, the anterior posterior axis passes right through the patella. So when patella moves medially, that is the pole of the patella moves medially, there is the medial rotation of the patella and when the pole of the patella moves laterally, that is the lateral rotation of the patella. This rotation occurs when the inferior pole of the patella moves along with the tibia. So if the tibia is there and patella is over here, the patella is attached to the tibial tuberosity by the patella tendon, right? So when the tibia rotates laterally, the patella will move along with it and it goes for rotation, that is a lateral rotation. And when tibia moves medially, the pole of the patella will go along with the tibia and it will cause medial rotation of the patella. And the last movement is the medial glide and the lateral glide. That is, so if this is the patella, when it glides medially, it is called as the medial glide and when it glides laterally, it is called as the lateral glide. So this glide occurs when the knee joint goes from fully extended to fully flexed position. That is, when you are in extension, the patella is relatively on the lateral side. And as you start going for flexion, the patella starts going downward and also medially. This occurs due to the lateral condyle of the femur and also unlocking of the knee joint. So if you know, in locking the tibia rotates laterally, right, in open kinematic chain. So when it starts going for flexion, as it medially rotates, 
the patella starts gliding medially so these are the movements of the patella now that we know the movements of the patella let us see what is patella alta and patella baja that are the pathology related to patella so there is something called as the insol salivary ratio now this ratio is the ratio between the patella length of the patella and the length of the patella tendon and it is 1 is to 1 the normal value is 1 is to 1 let us understand this visually so as we all know the patella lies in between the femoral condyles and it is attached to the tibia by the patella tendon over here so the insol salivary ratio is the ratio between the length of the patella and the length of the tendon which is which should be equal right for the ratio to be 1 is to 1 it should be equal the length of patella and the patella tendon should be equal and this ratio is increased in patella alta that is that is the tendon will be longer than the patella so as the tendon is longer the patella will be placed more superiorly in the patello femoral joint whereas in patella baja the tendon is shorter over here right see the tendon is shorter that's why the patella is placed more inferiorly during patella alta the patella is very instable because of the long tendon and the highly placed patella and also the range is increased because the patella is more superior it can go more inferior so the overall range of the patella is increased but at the cost of its stability that is the stability is reduced during patella baja the low lying patella that is the tendon is small right so we saw that the patella was more inferior so the patella is comparatively inferior and the tendon is short because of this the range at the knee joint is reduced and you can see increased capitis and retropatellar pain can be felt that that is the pain behind patella or behind your knee cap this ratio that is the insol salivary ratio is obviously reduced in patella baja whereas in patella alta it was increased so why are we learning about the patellar movements how is it important to us let us see that so if you see here in patellar flexion there is inferior glide of the patella and during patellar extension there is superior glide of the patella so if this is the patella during the flexion of the patella the patella will go inferiorly whereas during extension the patella will go superiorly so if you look at it from the side view so during flexion the patella moves inferiorly and the pole of the patella points posteriorly and during extension the patella glides superiorly that is the patellar extension also it moves from medial to lateral side and during the tibial rotation it moves along with the tibia that it causes medial and lateral rotation and during the relative movement of the femur that is medial and lateral rotation the patella also tilts and the patella also tilts medially the patella also tilts medially and laterally along the longitudinal axis so all these glides are very important to carry out normal function at the knee joint if the patella fails to glide superiorly or inferiorly or in any other direction for now let us take example of flexion extension or superior or inferior glide so during extension if the patella cannot glide superiorly if there is a problem in gliding of the patella superiorly it will hamper the knee range of motion or during flexion if it does not glide inferiorly it can reduce the flexion range of motion hence patella mobility is very important hence in clinics we should always check patella mobility to rule out patella as the cause of restriction of the knee range of motion so now let's summarize we talked about the patello femoral joint how it changes its contact point with amount of flexion or extension in the knee joint then we went to the different types of movements that are present in patella that is patellar glide inferior glide superior glide medial glide lateral glide and then the rotation that is medial and lateral rotation and tilt that is the medial and lateral tilt so there are total 8 movements in the patello femoral joint and then we finally talked about patella alta and patella baja that is the placement of the patella in the patello femoral compartment and then finally we discussed why these movements are important for us to learn so that we can increase the range of motion if the patellar mobility is restricted